Hello everyone. Today I have for you three exercises that I use all the time and I think they are super important and they will bring your playing to the next level. It doesn't matter if you play cello or violin or viola, for every string instrument they will really improve your playing. Exercise number one, play everything with a vibrato, but make it sound good. Try to phrase everything with the bow and you will feel that you know it sounds incredibly flat, incredibly ugly, but resist. Try to not vibrate at all and try to make it sound as good as possible only with the right hand. One main problem that every string instrumentalist has is that the vibrato becomes automatic. So it just does whatever the hand wants. And this is not only a problem for the vibrato, which becomes very unexpressive, but also for the bow hand. Vibrato can have the danger of being like makeup, you know, for the bow, for everything that you produce with the bow, even your intonation is harder to tell your intonation when you practice. So when you take the vibrato out of the question, you become really aware of what you are really doing with your right hand. So my advice is play a phrase without any vibrato, but try to make it sound as good as possible and you will become completely aware of the intonation to make it as pure as possible and also you will be completely aware of your legato and what you produce with the right hand. Now that we are talking about the bow, the bow also has a great danger of falling into this ironing motion of just going up and down automatically. That kind of approach will leave you with a very unexpressive, boring, flat you know, kind of playing. Try practicing as an exercise using only two thirds of the bow. With this, you are forcing yourself to use only the exact amount of bow that you need and like this your bow changes your legato and your bow distribution will improve incredibly you will feel really tight really trapped but try to make it sound as good as possible if your sound sounds choke then you are doing it wrong you have to make it sound free but with less bow with this exercise, not only you will gain a huge amount of bow control, which is very important, but also when you go back to playing with full bow, you will feel so much freer and also you will be able to decide when you use more, when you use less bow and your bow distribution will be ideal. And also you will gain many more colors that you will be able to do with different kinds of bow speed and different parts of the bow.
tip number three. This is only for slow phrases, you know, lyrical phrases, not for technical passages. Try playing it double tempo. One problem that we often have when we're practicing slow and we try to make as many details as possible, as many calls as possible, is that we kind of lose sight of the general picture, of the shape of the phrase. So just play it twice as fast, feel the natural rhythm of the phrase, feel where is the leaning points and the general inertia of the phrase. This will make a much more clear picture in your mind of the phrase and your playing will be much more organic. It's kind of like zooming out of a picture. If you are too close, you cannot really see the whole picture. to give you another tip, tip number four. Record yourself, always, at least twice a week. It's so important to have an objective view of what you are producing. If you record yourself on a daily basis, you will know exactly what to work on. And you will not waste your time in just repeating over and over. The recording will make you identify exactly what you're doing wrong and also will bring up some things that you do automatically, some bad habits and you will be able to correct them. So recording yourself is the fastest and probably the best way of improving. That's all I have for you guys today. These three tips, these four tips are actually really helpful to me so I hope you can use them in your practicing and help you guys. And thank you so much for watching and see you guys in the next one. Happy practicing.